Tad told me that he was uh, recording a, a single uh, with Jack and Dino uh, at Reciprocal. And uh, did I want to come down and check out what he was working on? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like really blown away with what Tad was doing all by himself. I mean, he was playing all the instruments, writing all the stuff. And it was really impressive. In the band I was in, Bundle of Hiss, used to play gigs with, with H Hour, which is the band that Tad used to play drums for. And uh, that's when Tad and I met. I didn't realize it at the time, but, but Tad was planning on switching to guitar qu and quitting the drums. And H Hour broke up uh, over that issue and, and others, perhaps. Kurt and I got along really well, and we shared similar humor. And uh, so that's kind of how it started there. And I, I had always been a fan of a drummer who was playing in a band called Death and Taxes at the time, and that wound up being Steve Weed. Our keyboard had just moved to California, and uh, we were like, wow, what do we do now? So Tad, you know, he talked to Sub Pop, and he got a single out and stuff, so I was like, okay, that sounds cool, let's do it, you know, so. And uh, Kurt knew about a guy that was playing guitar. Gary had been uh, in a band with Jonathan Poneman, and so I called up John, and I, I had seen Gary play with John before in, in a band. They had a band together called the Tree Climbers, and I was just blown away by his guitar playing. So we asked Gary to come in. And I said, well, why don't we just get these two guys together and we'll start seeing how it works. And uh, that's what became the first incarnation of Tad. Seattle was, was a nice, friendly little college town. Uh, you know, a maritime city, a port city right on the water. Very nice. Rains a little bit too much, but uh, there are a few rock bands, uh, just like in any other city. But then there was a record label, Sub Pop. Because there are hundreds of thousands of bands out there, and there always are millions of bands. And the way that you're going to make a distinction is by, of course, first and foremost, making music that people care about, but they also want to care about the people who are making the music. And that, you know, you create a, a, a mythology. If you just say, hey, you know, we're a rock band from Seattle, and we practice a lot in our garage, and we have, you know, we work at Kinko's, and you know, we hate our day jobs and we want to be rock stars. It's like, <laughs> you know, fuck that, man. You know, you and everybody else, you know, but you want to like create this whole sense that, you know, this is, we're an invading horde and, you know, we live on mountains and we eat raw flesh and we're going to come and rape your children. They played the role to a T. That was the best and most effective sonic representation of the way that the Tad Band sound, actually sounded live. And uh, I think Steve Albini just completely understood the band. We were tired when we came back. We put a lot into it. We poured ourselves into it. And, you know, we did this EP, you know, eight, seven songs in three days recording and mixing. It was, it was like the recording of an accident, of a car accident. Nothing rehearsed, it was just a collision and it was on tape. One, two, Eurovan and they have the tall you know luggage area we had all our t-shirts all our gear all of us plus our sound man plus our driver all crammed in the same Fiat van the same standard Fiat van everybody tours in you know I'm a big guy and uh, Nova Selich is a tall guy and I remember seeing him all hunched up like in, in a seat like this wherever because they're small seats you know so we were all just crammed in this van. There wasn't really any room to even move. And I remember playing in the UK with uh, Nirvana and it's just, just complete mayhem. Kids dropping down from the, the rafters one after the other, just floating off the stages, just like constantly. Just didn't know what to make of it at the time. Like, wow, this, 
It's pretty bizarre. They're, you know, one night Tad would headline, then and then the next night we would, and then they'd just go back and forth. I remember it took Nirvana it took us a, a, about a week or so, a couple weeks into the tour to finally kind of find our groove and start playing well. Like just making the transition, it took a while like, to get up to get up to speed, but then we started playing well. And see, we would open for Tad in the UK because Tad were in the music newspapers and so we were like the opening act and They rejected uh, Wood Goblins because, according to them, it was too ugly. <laughs> Which was, we, we kind of thought, kind of cool. <laughs> Being too ugly for MTV during the era of uh, Cherry Pie and, and Skid Row and shit like that. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of cool. <laughs>